What are some of the factors that might interfere with someone's recovery or, or make sex addiction uh, more complicated than, than it is already? There are a number of underlying uh, pathologies, psychopathologies, like uh, mood disorders, uh, depression being the most common. You know, really with compulsive sexual behavior or sex addiction, often depression is a part of that. Um, you know, as a person acts out and then begins to feel remorse and self-loathing and so forth afterwards, there's a, a, a real uh, change in mood. If they do have a, a clinical depression, then that depression needs to be treated. It may make it difficult, if not impossible, to do good recovery if there is something present like a mood disorder and it remains untreated. Another uh, common thing that I find is uh, ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Um, and it's not that it causes sex addiction or sex addiction causes the ADHD. They're often, uh, both of those are co-occurring disorders. If ADHD is present and is not treated, then it may make it difficult for a person to be able to focus long enough to be able to get sober or stay sober. What about the notion that I'm depressed and once I take care of my depression, then I won't be a sex addict anymore? It's, uh, it's not possible to cure sex addiction uh, by just treating the underlying pathologies. Uh, you know, people keep looking for, hoping for, wishing for the ability to be able to take a pill and cure sex addiction. Because this is both a thought disorder and a behavioral disorder, uh, it's necessary to, to deal with those underlying pathologies first and then let a person get uh, involved in a very active recovery program. By doing that, then uh, hopefully they're able to stay sober long term. Uh, how would somebody know they had a mood disorder or ADHD or, or some sort of psychiatric mm -hmm. disorder? One of the best ways is just to, to go visit a mental health care professional and to get assessed for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we routinely will screen clients for uh, mood disorders as well as ADHD and a number of other things. And if those are present, then we'll give direction on, on how to get those uh, taken care of. One of the things, though, that is, is helpful is just interviewing the partner of a sex addict. Uh, they're often the, the one that's in a good position to be in the, really the best position to be able to say, you know, there may be a mood disorder there. They may not phrase it like that. They may just say, you know, hey, this person I live with has these wild mood swings. I mean, they're up here and then they're way down here. Or they'll say, this person I live with, they, they can't focus on anything. They, they don't finish jobs. They make promises they don't keep. They uh, forget where they're going. They, they lose, every morning they look for their keys. They can't find them. Uh, all of those, by the way, the, the last things I mentioned may be an indicator of, of ADHD. If the, the partner tells us about something like that, then prior to coming to do an intensive, we'll encourage them to go see a mental health care professional uh, and either get tested mm -hmm. or, based on what we've already heard, we believe there is something going on there, encourage them to go to a psychiatrist where they live in, in their area and uh, see if they're not a candidate for some kind of medication. And the therapist and the treating physician can work together to solve sure. the multiple problems. And it, and it does need to be a team approach.